You are the sweetest. 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 Sweetest girl I know around. I know that you're down. You make me feel like I've been, I've been all around. I just want to make you mine. I just want to make you mine. Say it again. Say it again. I know that we can be more than friends. I start my story because that's a song that a student wrote. And sometimes I have to be the voice for my students, even if it means to sing. Learning with Legaspi, that's how my students know me as. Legaspi. Hello, Legaspi. I've um, dropped the mister. And to learn with Legaspi requires me to tell my story and to let them know I did grow up singing. I did grow up skateboarding. This is my attitude. And the reason why I wanted them to know my story, because I felt in the 21st century they needed to be aware and confident and know that their mindfulness can get them to advance. I wanted to unwrap those gifts. And so the challenge was language. They didn't know how to code switch. Go from academic language to the basketball language to the rap language or whatever language was necessary for the circumstance, our condition, our event, our scenario. They couldn't turn it off, turn it on. They didn't know when it was appropriate, when to use it. So that was a challenge for me. And I thought, music. And then I thought, access. This is something that I always felt. Because kids would come to me, Mr. Do you, can I come to your classroom and use this? Mr. Do you have this? Do you have that? Music can give that access. I also thought to myself that students are bored. Teaching for nine years, I was trying to synthesize. What is this? What's going on? You know, I'm doing everything I can. I'm staying up late, but I'm producing the same results. What's going on? So I had to figure out a better way to engage my audience. So then I had to share my story. And my story is of song and of music. I grew up with people like Will I Am. Who knew that he would be who he is today? He is somebody who taught me to discover your passion. And once you discover your love, do it. It's hard to find a job you love. It's easier to take what you love and make it your job. In order for you to do what you love, you're going to have to take risks. And I thought, music again. What a great way for my students to take risks, for them to perform, to creatively express themselves in so many ways. So I have this workflow to create this mindfulness. My students were constantly creating. They're going to math. They're coming to me in history. I teach U.S. history and uh, student body government, which allows me to uh, explore leadership and, and a lot of uh, service projects. But they didn't have a finish line. They, they couldn't get to the part where I wanted them to get to share. And that's how I started. I shared my talent with you. And a lot of my students were very hesitant, reluctant to share what they've created. And the piece they were missing was a curation. Never did they go back and get in the driver's seat and say, this is my best work. Or let me take this and remix it. Or you know what? I wrote that on paper. Now let me make it a video. Let me make it into a song. Let me collaborate with somebody using FaceTime and see what they think and give me feedback on my creation. I'm in constant creation. I tell my students all the time, I get tired of creating. Not only that, I had a workflow in my mind when I started teaching. It was discover, define, design, develop, and deliver. It's like a five Ds, I called it. But that was still too much. I needed three steps. And for me, it was create. And you're going to create content. My kids at school were creating content already. After school, there'd be a fight, pull out the camera, Film it. Hollenbeck fights. We got up to Hollenbeck fights 15. And so I had to say 
to my staff and to the people who are questioning the students' content. We have to change what they're doing. We have to get them to think about curation, selecting, organizing, choosing. You know, before you post, pause, think about it. Is that how you want people to see you? Because I know you did that this morning when you put on those blue socks. Now, design the power tools. Which tools are the best? That's up to you to find. We're all in different circumstances. We all have different things to cook with. I'm a teacher, and I've been very fortunate in the last two years that I've started to use Twitter, YouTube, Google, Google Docs, Dropbox, tablet learning, so that I can get a first-hand experience of what tool will be the best, because that same tool that works for this class is not the same tool that I may use next year. So after you create the content, they have to design and develop and decide what is that best work? What is that going to be that project that tells my story? Is it going to be a video? Is it going to be a video and a PowerPoint, or these days a keynote? Now, my students, they love the iPad. When I first brought it to the classroom, it was like, whoa! Reminded me of that old Max Al commercial where the guy turns on the, the, the radio and his, he gets blown back. And at first, I was happy that they were excited about it. And then I took a step back and I said, wow, you see this as a luxury? This is a power tool. What are you going to do with it? Because if it's a luxury, they're going to play Angry Birds. They're going to honeymoon with it. But if now they see it as a learning device, they now own their learning. It's the editor who learns. That's what's wrong with schools. Teachers are in the driver's seat. They're curating. They're sharing. They're creating. They're curating. They're sharing. And the kid is just bored because they're like, I want to drive. Hold on. Because you know I'm a nerd. I want to tell you everything. I want to explain everything. And then by the time it's your turn, bell rings. Start again tomorrow. The last piece of this workflow is to share it. So after you've decided what is your best work, I'm going to share it. And I started with podcasts in 2006. Somebody showed me Podomatic, and I was like, wow, you can put it on iTunes? I can get a global audience? I can see the stats of who's listening to me? That's good information I want to learn about. So I started becoming more vested in my share. And then it just overlapped, the curate, the content, the, the, the creating, the sharing, all became one to tell my story. So like a DJ, and that's my metaphor, I just started DJing in 2008. I had some students come to me, hey, mister, you need to buy a DJ set. All right, let's do it. So we buy the DJ set, and uh, I started to make connections. And I saw that the students were selecting songs for certain events. And so it did introduce this idea of curating, choosing, organizing. What's going to make the people move? What are you going to play when the mayor comes out and gives his speech? And then sometimes you do have to listen and turn off the beats to go a cappella, like I opened up and just sing from the heart. So share, broadcast it somehow, podcast it, the new term. My favorite, tweet. And then plus one, plus it, Google Plus. So many ways to share this critical thinking, this curation, this creation of content for our students to become more mindful in the 21st century. To be mindful is to know what's going on now. So design with a purpose. I want my students to advance in order for me to be the best teacher, because I can't stand and do nothing. I do need to stay three or more steps ahead. But definitely, I need to stick to the script and not just go everywhere, just because somebody says, this is a good program. If I believe music is 
what works for me and my students, I'm going to stick to that. And I like the word learning over education. To learn is action. I want my students to have critical minds, and I do want to get ready for my Prezi, which will kind of bring everything together. I'm a teacher. I like to review. So this is the review of what I've posted on my chalkboard here, of that workflow of create, curate, and my favorite, share. So if we can queue up the Prezi, that would be excellent. My story, I'm a skateboarder, a nerd, a poet. And my story starts with this. Students were sharing their talents, singing, showing me what they're doing. They're creating constantly in other classes with me, other friends. I told you the example, the content of the fights. I had to change that. I had to give them access to not only just college, but whatever they wanted to find and explore. I saw Sal Khan using the Wacom tablet. I said, I want to bring that. I've always been non-traditional, always. Always getting into trouble. Thinking of new ways to learn and fight crime, though, because I want to engage students so that they can find their greater purpose and innovate. This is how I keep it simple. I dream big every day. And I'm glad to be here at the Big Ideas Fest so I can have other big ideas be absorbed. This is what I run. Check this out. Academic Artist Project. YouTube it. I got some good content. Again, discover and define. Create. Find what is going to get you excited. Use videos. Use art. And that's why I'm the Academic Artist Project. To me, that is how I engage kids. Second step, curate. Choose. Organize. This is the school I teach at, Hollenbach Junior High School. It's going to be 100 years old coming up. We also have this global vision. I started doing podcasting in 2006. As I mentioned, today I'm doing YouTube videos and creating playlists. DJing is what helped me practice this art of curating so that I can become a better curator. This past summer, I became a YouTube star teacher so that I continue to become the best at my craft and so that I can be the voice of a teacher because definitely I agree the voice of a teacher needs to get louder. Too many people are speaking on my behalf. So I appreciate you listening to me. Students are looking for answers all the day. They're curious. They have great questions that I could never think of. They are tomorrow's leaders. As I mentioned, you must pause and post. Get our students to think about social media differently. Come up with a checklist for them so that they're not just posting anything. Maybe it's in this tweet, you must have 140 characters and everything must be spelled correctly. And I would also say, get students to solve and collaborate. Collaboration is key, and it is going to be tough. And my favorite is this mindfulness that we need to create for the students. MadPad is an app that I think you could do some great things with. You can record sight words and get students to manipulate and get more involved with their own creations. On the iPad, I believe it's an infinite tool. You can do endless things with it. There I am. You'll see a lot of my branding with this so that our students can show the world what their gifts are. And so my story ends here. Thank you.